Are you one of those people that does this and you blow on your wood stove and you wish you had one of these? I've always wanted a bellows. Ever since I was a little kid, I saw these on, I don't know what TV show or movie, but I was like, man, these things are awesome. I wish we had them. And finally, I made one. And the start of the fire, awesome. This is part two of building a bellows. If you haven't already seen it, go back and watch part one. The whole idea for this video came actually from this book from the 1980s that we have. And I was reading through it and I turned to this page. I turned to this page and I thought, why have I never made my own bellows? I don't have to buy it. I can build it myself. I can build whatever I want. So I used this book as a reference and I built a working set of bellows and I think they're neat looking. This is how I finished part two. Okay, we're back at it for part two of building a bellows. You can see there's a little bit of gap in there. I'm just gonna kind of smooth everything down a little bit. And for that, I'm just gonna use a 120 grit flapper disc on my grinder. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's close enough for what we're looking for. Now we're just gonna uh, sand some of this stuff down and smooth it out. Okay, this spot's just a little bit too high. I'm just gonna shave this down here. And since we need to move a lot of wood, we're gonna be using this. We're just gonna come down to our depth around the edges and then we'll kind of connect the dots when we're done. Yeah, whoops, went a little bit too deep, uh, but looks pretty good. Now we're gonna hit these corners. Well, the dang handle broke. Uh, there was a knot right there, so we're just gonna shorten it. And this side only needs to be so long because I'm gonna be putting my air nozzle in here. And after seeing what I had, this is, this is what's gonna work. So I'm gonna cut it down to this length here. Okay, the end of our bellows needs a nozzle. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna find center this direction, find center this direction, and then we're just gonna trace this out so that we can insert this into the end. Okay, we've got three and a quarter. So that's gonna be one and five eighths. And then we've got one inch, which will be a half inch. Okay, across the flats on this nozzle, it's five eighths, but we also need to know what it is from point to point. And we're just gonna add another 16th to that. Uh, so we just need to remember that for later. We're gonna drill a pilot hole through there with the eighth or three sixteenths bit, then we'll upsize that to a five eighths bit. Well, as luck would have it, I don't have a five eighths bit. So we're gonna do this with a half inch bit and we're gonna kind of improvise. You 
can see our hole, and here's our thing. We could put this in here like this, but I need it to fit tight. So I'm going to cut this, a tip to cut this hole out. And we know that our flats are 5 eighths. So I'm just going to center my tape measure on this. And then mark a 16th there. And one there. And I should be able to hold this in place in between those two flats. And I'll trace around this. Pretty close. Not quite centered, but I'll just compensate that for that when I cut it out, I guess. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use this jigsaw blade. And this wood should be soft enough. I should just be able to cut this. Okay, now we're just going to knock this in there with a block of wood. Okay, we've got it in there. All my fiddling around, I cracked the wood right there, but luckily the hinge goes over that part. Well, I saved stuff. This is my box of hinges, and I think this might work, what I've got here. This one's kind of got like a little bit of a spring-loaded action. So that should hold down my mistake that I made, because uh, the screws go on either side of it. But we'll go ahead and sand this thing down before we really do anything else. And now that we have this sanded down, we're going to put this wood polish on here. This is just a mixture of equal parts beeswax, linseed oil, and turpentine. And we're just going to hit the outside of this. We don't care about the inside because it's never going to be seen. And... There'll be a piece of leather holding this whole thing together. So, Okay, those are done. We're just going to let them sit here and dry while I work on the next part of this project. Okay, we're going to be working on the gusset pattern. And I'm just going to point out something. This measurement here is the thickness of our two boards with the bellows open to the desired height. This is the back side for however far we want it to open. In our case, it, this is nine inches. This is an inch and a quarter. And then the length of these would be the length of our bellows. The length of this would be the dimension of the back of our bellows. And then this side would just mirror this side. So that's what we're gonna be laying out on our piece of leather. Okay, we're going to make a mark down here on the end. And we're just using an ordinary pin. Our bellows is 16 and a quarter is how long it is. We're going to add a little bit so that we can uh, account for the radius. So I'm going to go 16 and a half. And I'm just making a parallel line here with our first line. Now we're going to mark out the back, back side of the bellows. So we're going to do six and seven eighths. And we're going to make another parallel line here. And we're going to mark out 16 and a quarter. We're going to add a little bit to it like we did on the last one. Okay, we're going to mark out 16 and a half again. Now the next thing we're going to do is this is the center of our bellows. We want to have, we want to lay this out first because we're going to be able to use our leather 
um, most efficiently right here. So we're going to just draw a square line across this. Then we'll pull from there to there our height, which is 8 inches. And then these will end up tapering this way and this way. Okay, we're going to go all the way almost to the edge here. We're going to make our mark at 8 inches. We've got the center of our gusset laid out now. Now we're going to taper down from here down to there. What we're going to do here is we're going to find center of our piece, so 4 inches, and we're going to make a reference mark down here. And we're going to taper down to an inch and a quarter, which means we need to mark each side. We're just going to mark each side of center 5 eighths of an inch. And then we're going to connect, we're going to connect the lines. And now we'll do the same thing on this side. Okay, you can see what that gusset looks like now. Now let's just cut it out. And we're just using a nice pair of scissors to do this. We're going to save this piece for a different part. Don't throw away any of your leather. Save all the scraps. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. Now we are going to make the valve cover. And it's just going to be a two and a half by two and a half square. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, there's that. This is the other piece to the valve cover. And we're just going to go as wide as we can go on this piece of scrap, which is about an inch and an eighth. And closer to an inch. And that's about five inches long. Okay, we've got a three quarter inch hole drilled here. And then this is our valve cover. We're gonna put it on with these two corners facing towards the front and the back of this bellows. And we're gonna place a tack on this corner. And on this corner. Now we're going to take this strip and we're going to attack it here and here. We don't want to attach it to this because we want this to be able to let air in. Otherwise the bells won't work. This needs to be able to restrain this but not close it all the way off. We want this to have some give here. It needs to be able to let air in so that's why it's like that okay now we're going to mark out the back and what we're going to do is we're just going to center these two lines on our bellows and then we're going to mark out where this handles at because we need to cut that leather right there okay so that's for the one side and then we're just going to make sure the other side matches that exactly we're just going to center this side the same way. We're going to mark it here and mark it here. Okay, and we're just going to make a parallel line with this line. And we're going to go in 5 eighths of an inch 
because that is the thickness of our piece. And we're just going to slit this. We're not going to actually cut across that line. We're just going to make a slit. So I'm just going to mark this one uh, with a V so that I know it goes to the valve side, just in case they are a little bit different. Okay, I got the first two brads started there because honestly I couldn't really do anything with the camera and start those. And now I'm going to work this around the one side of the bellows and then the other side. And we're just using these 7 16 decorative nails. They've got a brass finish on them. I got a nice rounded head. Okay, we're going to install this hinge now. So I ended up losing my footage on when I was putting all the leather on there. So that's why you don't see me doing that. And then uh, I just went ahead and made that piece of leather for the the hinge cover and nailed it on. I appreciate you guys watching and I hope this inspired you to build your own bellows. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.